Alrighty, well, morning, everybody. Well, this is gonna be kind of a, for lack of a better word, emergency, <laughs> emergency bid. Um, I had just finished up making my cast video, and then shortly after, I um, started watching a movie called uh, The 36 Chambers of Shaolin or something like that. Like, I talked about it in my cast video earlier, but, so I just figured, um, had my fill of that, that movie for the moment, so I just uh, switched down over to uh, D and D Beyond here. Um, just uh, it was a it's a website that I started off. I started perusing recently. I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, but I'm I'm still uh, I'm still ironing out the kinks on this. Um, I uh, made a few uh, made a few screen tweaks on my OBS, so it it probably it's not quite going to be perfect. So, but like I said, for those who don't know, Dungeons and Dragons Beyond, it's just, um, it's a website, it's database, it's got, it's got rules, characters, you can create your own character, I think you can even create your own campaign, um, you can also create, um, you can create your own encounters and all that, so, and it's got forums and message boards and whatnot, so you can go on there and all that, so, anyway, um, before I continue on, I am going to have some music running in the background. So, um, I have this, I was playing this during my cast video. I figured, uh, since I actually did a copyright check on it and went through and everything, um, I didn't really feel like chasing down any other kinds of music. Uh, so, like I said, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to keep this video short. But I just, I felt, uh, after seeing some of, uh, seeing some of the stuff I've seen on this website. I, or anyway, let me let me go back to the, let me go back to the music. The music's going to be the Angling Loser Arena of Apprehension. So it's just going to be some ambient music running in the background. But like I said, if um I might just go ahead and I'll just go ahead and loop it. Okay. So, but one, so anyway, um, so after, um, looking at D&D &D Beyond, um, just checked out a few things. Eventually, eventually there, um, you had an option to, you had an option to subscribe. Um, uh, I just, but, uh, I went ahead and did that. And, uh, I just went ahead and got the master subscription. Normally, it would have started at all. If you would have paid monthly, it would have been six bucks a month. But if you paid for a whole year, they knock it off by some odd percent. Like here, it's a uh, like a seventy-two bucks a year. But if you if you paid the full money, it's only sixty. I just went ahead and did that because I'm figured I'm probably going to be I'm probably going to be using this quite a bit. But anyway, um, I guess uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of history on me, a um, little bit of D and D history. I've loved it ever since, probably the '80s. Um, I think I've said this in some of my cast videos. I loved everything about it, except the actual playing of it, the, the tabletop version. I mean, you know. So, I mean, but like I said, my uh, my favorite video game genre is RPGs. So, RuneScape for six played RuneScape for six years, World of Warcraft for four and a half, um, Final Fantasy fourteen for at least five years, and took like a, a nine month hiatus to play a play a game called Path of Exile, um, Grim Dawn, Diablo, Diablo two, II, Diablo three, and just a whole boatload of other RPGs throughout the years. So, but like I said, the the few times that I actually watched. I actually watch people play it on tabletop. It just, I can't sit still. I can't, I just can't sit through it. So, it's really, really hard to watch.
But again, the main, uh, the main, the main thing I'm wanting to do on here. Um, so when I got this, this is basically, um, this is basically the player's handbook. But the problem is, is I'm having a really hard time reading this. I just, again, I can't, I can't just sit and read this, especially when I'm trying to do it from my couch. So I mean, I'd rather just read the physical book. So what I thought I'd go ahead and do here. It's just, um, and just kind of, you just, you know, kind of do a video about this. And then do, um, oh, and, um, and as far as, um, what books I had or what D&D &D books I had, I had most of the first edition books, most of the second edition books, and a few of the third edition books, so never touched the fourth edition at all and the fifth edition what you're looking at right here is totally new to me so. but from watching uh i was also playing a game called idle champions of the forgotten realms it's a it's a D, &D version of uh crusaders of the lost idols it's an idol game but yeah i just but playing um playing idol champs um and then Every so often, a pop-up would come up. Uh, check out such and such person's podcast. Click here to go there, or something like that. And I'd click, you know, I'd click it and go there, and you know, I just started watching all these podcasts. So I figured, and a lot of them were, a lot of them were talking about D and D Beyond. So I figured, well, must have come here, see what that's like. So, so I'm, but basically, I'm just gonna do some uh, writing commentary on this. Imagine and create a character of your own. It's a combination of game stats, role-playing hooks, and your imagination. That's the personality, appearance, and backstory of your character. AKA Avatar. Okay, they hey, they say the same thing here. much already have an idea as to what I want. I've been working on it. Um, like a, a half, a half orc monk. So, more on that later, if I even make it that far. My courageous fighter, skulking rogue, urban cleric, flamboyant wizard. Unconventional, such as a brawny rogue who likes hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah, but basically the possibilities are nearly endless. So. Dwarves or elves, building care. Yeah, so, but like I said, here. And, or, if you can't really think of anything else, or if you're just breaking into the game, just pick a fighter. They're the meat, they're the meat and potatoes of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they're the meat and potatoes of the RPG world. It's about as basic as it gets. A you can use a napkin as a character sheet if you wanted. At least in theory. With a player named Bob building his dwarf character, Boiner. Yeah, and, and I I come from the old school where it was just, you know, L. Dwarf, uh, gnome, human, half elf, you know, um, half orc, you know, just basic ones. Yeah, the most count. Yeah, it says here, elves and humans. Yeah, so now, I get my guessing. Uh, these days, it's now. Uh, I'm a half elf. I'm half dwarf and half elf. You know, I'm half known. I'm a half known. Have giant monk or you know that kind of shit. I'm a I'm a 
half dragon, half carrion crawler, half human, you know, half angel, half devil, half tarasque, half red dragon, you know, half munch, and all munchkin, baby. Anyway. Yeah, the race you choose. Yeah, let's, uh... So you guys can see this, okay? Okay, so we just, uh, we basically skipped ahead. Yeah, so basically, races, um, languages, sub-races, yeah, so here we are, dwarves. Long memory, long crutches. Clans and kingdoms. Gods, gold, and clan. But it, if you played uh, World of Warcraft, a lot of this is going to be familiar to you. A lot of sore happenings, humans. <laughs> Dwarf names. Yeah, it's a late. Constitution. Okay, so yeah, I, now we're starting to get into like sub races, but I don't recall this being at all back in first or second edition. I'm not even sure. Maybe in the third edition. Yeah, and I'm looking over at the left here too, Dragonborn. I don't think I'm. I don't think I've ever seen that in any of the, any of the other editions. Like I said, these days you could probably... You can make a half halfling, half human, and a half dwarf, and a half gnome, and a, and a half half orc. Quarter orc. And so it... Okay, so... Oh. Or if you're um, if you're familiar with Lord of the Rings at all, and I gotta I gotta look at some here. Okay, it's still going, it's still going. I didn't hear any music at first, so I thought uh YouTube might have froze up. So yeah, but like I said, if you're uh if you're familiar with uh, Lord of the Rings at all, yeah, a lot of those will probably be familiar to you. I just noticed this. This is kind of helpful. Having uh, having the names right here, so you have an idea as to what you what to name your guy or girl, rather than having to consult a random name gener a random name generator. Variety of natural abilities. Yeah, yeah they're sturdy. They're practically immortal. I don't know what uh, has advantage. I don't know what that means, but I've heard, I've seen this mechanic from time to time in here. The the such and such has advantage. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Here come the sub races. We got high. We got wood. Oh, wow, that's it? I mean, there's, uh, there's Dark Elves. And yeah, they, they got Wood Elves. Um, I think they have Aquatic Elves as well. I'm sure they probably have Desert Elves. They probably have Winter Elves. They probably have Moon Elves. They have Space Elves and all sorts of others. Uh, then we got the half Ari Sal Ari Salvatore. This guy's um, 
Yeah, he's old school. This guy, uh... He's, a uh, He's a medieval author, I think. But yeah, he's... Whoops. Didn't mean to click that. But yeah. He... He's a legend. Okay, so yeah, this... Don't surprise me. I mean, think, uh... Think Hobbit. Hobbit or Willow. Yeah. But like, in case I didn't say earlier, I kind of like this. I don't recall seeing this in um in any of the other uh, D and D books that I have. I think um. Another um uh, another uh, RPG that I that uh, I was pretty heavily into was Shadowrun. Um, they kind of had this too in their uh, player's handbook. Uh oh, Marsa. Oh damn, just two. Lightfoot and Stout. Figured there'd be like. Half dragon, half halfling, co or yeah, half dragon, half halfling combinations or something. Yeah, variety. Depth one, ambitious. Yep. Yeah, humans are the ones. Humans are the race to pick when you can't think of anything else. So I, for those that are all, for those that have never played D and D before and are looking to create a character, um, the easiest one just pick a human fighter. Yeah, that's about as that's about as basic as you can get right there. Second best friends. Okay. Human names and ethnicities. Um, Kalashite. John Doth. Marm. I don't recall. Yeah, here. Yeah, we got a wide variety here, but, uh. Luskin? Luskin is an actual, uh. It's an actual city. Uh. Now we got Milan. I'm pretty sure this this variant here is gonna be pretty popular. Whoa! They're like, all you gotta, I mean, all you had to look at was Milan and Eastern. Whoa! They're like martial arts monks and samurai and shit. Fuck yeah! I want the, I want to be that guy. You know? Whoa! Bruce Lee rocks. So, yeah. Everyone's gonna go for the Milan. Then we got here early. Got here early. Be knitting guys over here and then I see me. Oh wow. No, maybe it's these guys. Most numerous powerful ethnic group in Karatur. Oh, that's um. God, what? I want to say Mesopotamia. Like Aztecs. So then what a. Eastern. And to the Aryan, to Rami, down. I got a bunch of variants. Uncommon races. Gotta hand it to them. Props to them for bringing this up because uh, I think the, the uncommon races, like the Dragonborn, I don't think they existed in uh, first, second, or third edition. I mean, first, second, or, I mean, the first three editions, it was just dwarf, elf, halfling, human, um, gnome, half elf, and half orc. I mean, they didn't have Dragonborn. And, um, 
And they didn't have Tiefling either. I don't know how well you can see them. They're at the very lower left corner here. Yeah, I, this... I probably have no interest in Dragonborn. Like I said, I'm pretty... And I'm pretty sure because it's got the word dragon in it. And uh, they look like dragons. And you know how much we all love dragons. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a pretty popular race right here. Oh, I forgot about this part of the album. Self-sufficient clans. Uh, draconians. Oh, damn. Never read into this. Dragonlance, it's a... It's a, it's a fantasy campaign setting, like Forgotten Realms. But yeah, I know ne next to nothing about Dragonlance. Yeah, it. I don't, I don't know what kind of requirement, but that I that I'd come up with. But uh, I would if I was to ever make a campaign, I would say no. Your very first character in my campaign cannot be a dragonborn. Unless you. Uh, Unless you want your guild to be the lollipop guild. Sorry if I don't get the reference. Wait, yeah, no. Yeah, where's... It said uncommon. Let me uh, scroll back up here. The Dragonborn and the rest of the race in this chapter are uncommon. They don't exist in every world of D&D, &D, even when they found there are less widespread than... And, um... I know, as far as this goes, um, some of the limitations they have in some of these campaigns is uh, you could have no more than one class or one of a particular class in this uh, dungeon party. You could have no more than one of this particular race in this, you know, in this dungeon party. Weariness and wonder, okay. They interact with but small towns and village, yep. Yeah, so, but like I said, if it's, if I was, if I was to ever be a DM, or du short for Dungeon Master, I mean, Dragonborn, you couldn't, um, at least for your very first character in my campaign, you couldn't be a Dragonborn. They did, to me, that screams Munchkin. Oh, and for those that don't know, um, Munchkin, it's a derogatory term for somebody who, especially when it's a, especially a newbie player who wants, who wants to be every race, they want every class, they want everything added to them immediately. Um, I guess another way of looking at it is the, uh, a Munchkin is the D&D &D equivalent of a Karen. Oh, let me talk to your manager type thing. Yeah, that, that's a Munchkin. So yeah, like, but like I said, I'm looks a little too powerful for me. So yeah, and you even got a, you even got a freaking breath weapon. Now, I would have called a gnome an uncommon race. I mean, they they've been around since. I want to say first edition. If not, then definitely the second edition. So, they're, they're one of the old ones. Right, Burroughs. Thank you. 
Like, like I said a few moments ago, they're not... This is not an uncommon race, at least not to me. Forest and rock? Uh, okay, deep? Um, I'm thinking the second edition deep gnomes were a... Uh, Okay, yeah, they're the I think yeah, they're good. I think there was one Duragar, that's Duragar are the um underground dwarves. They're evil. But yeah, rock gnome, don't care. And we got half elf. But I'm pretty sure if you've ever if you ever watched uh, Lord of the Rings um, World of Warcraft, etc. Familiar ways to you. And, um, Half Orc, uh, when I was creating my, uh, when I was creating my monk, this was, uh, this was my race. And I'm pretty sure it's probably the, uh, probably the least popular, so. I don't like to follow the herd, so yeah, I went with half orc. Whereas again, most everybody's probably gonna go with dragon board. Ooh, dragons! So yeah. Strength plus two, constitution by one. Um, I think they get a penalty to charisma too, if I'm guessing right. Savage attacks. Yep, here we go. Tiefling's probably gonna be another one. Whoa! Tiefling, they like have horns and stuff. Cool! So. And as far as I know, tieflings are actually evil. Yeah. I'm sure somebody probably made a made a made a lawful good tiefling paladin out there somewhere. You know, miracle, fucking miracle, small towns across the world absolutely love them. You know. Yeah, from the looks of this, um, if I was to ever run a campaign, your first character, uh, your first character cannot be a tiefling. So let me uh. Oh, and again, for those that are curious, the music in the background is the Angling Loser Arena of Apprehension. So, but I just, I got it set to loop. And I think a uh, class was up here. No, it wasn't. Okay, so here's a class. Um, that. so let's look up the classes. Oh, 
Oh, Barbie. And I have... If I remember right on the Barbarian, yeah, he's basically a combat powerhouse. But on the downside, he has to... I can't remember if it's a... If it's a debuff... Oh. It's kind of a debuff. I don't... I, I don't want to say that it's, it's classified as a skill, but... You have to... You have to be illiterate. Like, you can't read or write anything. Which, uh, outside of combat, that can actually be a pretty big hindrance. Yeah, so we got a bard. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that they're gonna explain everything down below. Yep. So. So, yeah, like I said, um, barbarians are the, uh, if you ever played the uh, Barbarian in Diablo, like Diablo 2, yeah, these guys. So, like, like I said, these guys are just, they're ass-kicking dynamos, so, but, they ain't much, uh, they're basically gonna suffer at everything else in life, though. Berserk Rage. Uh, they can do it twice a day. Primal Path, I don't know what that is. Extra Attack. Fast Movement, that's... This is another big calling card of a Barbarian. Fast Movement. They can run pretty quick on the battlefield. Like I, But like I said, if you've ever played... Uh, if you ever played Diablo 2, maybe Diablo 3, then a lot of these abilities here were pretty much carried over into that game. Like, again, Fast Movement. I think on Diablo 2, Barbarian had a skill that increased, or had a passive skill that increases movement speed. But uh, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. Berserk. Um, in Diablo 2, Berserk was an actual attack. Uh, he dealt a shit ton of magic damage, but it also set your defense to zero. Monks kind of have this too. When you're not wearing any armor, your armor class, uh, for those that don't know, armor class is just a number of how difficult you are to hit. In the first, I think in the first two editions, maybe in the third edition, the lower that number was, the harder you are to hit, or the harder you are to be hit. Um, I think the way they do armor class in uh, this edition, it's um, the higher your, the higher the number, the harder you are to hit. So yeah, it's equal to ten plus dexterity modifier, constitution modifier, basically. The higher your dexterity, the higher your constitution, the bigger the modifier you get, so. Which, now that I think about it. Okay, I'll, we'll probably get there eventually. Or. No, uh, actually, I might. Actually, I might be cutting it off soon. I should, I should almost made a stream out of this. Reckless attack. Yeah, you just you can do an all-out attack, but it, again, kind of it kind of goes along the lines of that berserk attack the barbarian has on Diablo 2. You deal a ton of damage, but you also have zero defense. Extra attack, fast movement. Yeah, your speed increases by 10 feet. I think um. Monk has that too. Little critical. Primal paths. Uh, Berserker friendly, mindless rage. Yes. I think this is kind of like um. I want to say this is kind of like um. War cry, the ability on Diablo two. 
It stuns and deals damage. Oh, oh I got the bard. Kind of like the bard on uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Basically, bards, um, they do a little of everything. But their main, their main focus is, uh, music. Um, music, arts, uh, support. Bards can cast spells, but not as well as a full-blown wizard. Inspiration, yeah. So it looks like a lot of this is pretty much carry over from uh, second, and, second and third edition. Oh, oh, I got the clerk. Healers, warriors. Damn, they got a... So they do have El Mater in here, then. Yeah, so... I mean, I'm sure if you've, uh... If you played any kind of RPG out there, this is a class that's gonna be pretty familiar to you. They're basically healers. Or... In most of those other RPGs, they're basically relegated to the healer role. In here, they can do a lot more. So. History insight. Medicine. Nature, tempest, trickery, or war. A bit gum. Yeah, I don't I think it was. This version here wasn't much different from the the second or third that I can think of. On dead. Oh, damn, this looks like it's gonna be a long one. Nope, they cut it off. And these are the tree huggers. Wisdom, yep. Choose the hermit background. So yeah, um, if you played uh, Diablo 2, I, I don't, yeah, they weren't in Diablo 3, but they were in Diablo 2, you know, um, druids in that game, they could shapeshift into uh, werewolves or bears, uh, they could, uh, they could summon animals to help them out, and they can also, they can also, uh, cast like, fire and nature, uh, fire and nature spells themselves, so looks like it ain't much different here. Medicine. I'm gonna be shutting down soon. Oh, 
damn, they got it too. I think monks have the monks have this as well. You don't age as fast. Of course, this is almost uh this buff is almost moot. I mean, by the time you get to 18th level, you're probably so damn old anyway. The the aging slowdown deal ain't gonna matter as much. Here we go. And like I said earlier, if you if you're kind of overwhelmed by all the classes out there, just pick a human fighter. This is a no frills class right here. It, it's it's just as it appears. I mean, that just sword and board, or just run in and kick ass, take names, is that kind of thing. So well-rounded specialists. Train for danger, yep, creating a fighter. Combat training. Um, no, I don't think creating a fighter shouldn't be that difficult. And you can almost tell just by looking at this. I mean, fighters aren't rocket science. I mean, ability score improvement, extra attack. I'm sure a martial art type, you get to, you can specialize in something. Basically, with a fighter, and there's probably going to be a little bit more to it, but a barbarian, you could just be Hulk Smash. So, like I said, you don't if you were to if you were to actually role play these characters, I mean, they're not they're not that hard. Um, if you got if you had a class like a bard, you're probably going to have a tougher time role playing him because he he does so much. I mean, spell casting plus. He's a storyteller, musician, artist, you know, etc. So, there is more involved with him. Um, cleric, kind of the same thing. Um, you're fighting, you know, you're fighting for a god. You know, you're fighting for... For whatever, I mean, there's... And then there's, uh... Kind of like the bard, but more so, there's spellcasting involved. So... You know, clerics have a... A stronger, more pronounced belief system, so... You're gonna have to you're gonna have to role play that as well. Druid. Um Druid, kind of the same thing. Their Their alignment is neutral. They're neither they're neither good nor evil. They're just about nature. So that might go a little against the grain and you know what you've been brought up to believe, you know, morality and that kind of stuff. So it they kinda have a different point of view on that. Um monk. My, uh, my preferred class, um, if he, the one movie that comes to mind was one that I, that I was watching a few hours ago, the 36 Chambers of Shaolin, so yeah, that, playing a monk requires a totally different mentality than the conventional one in your world world, the one that, the reality that you live in, so. Paladin, um, yeah, they have a strict code of, uh, a strict code of goodness. Um, they're super moral, so that's gonna be another class that's tough to roleplay. Um, Ranger, they're they're kind of, they're kind of a go-between between, between fighter and barbarian. But again, they're 
their home is out in the woods. So if you're a if you're a city boy, basically these kind of these kind of classes that are harder to role play, they're not for everybody. They're not that universal. Ranger, kind of like that too. I mean, again, now if you're a country boy, if you're a country boy laying out on the sticks, then you might have an easier time playing a ranger, but but for the most part, not that easy. Um, rogue, I'd probably say fairly easy to play, but not as easy to play as a fighter. I mean, there's there's a wide there's a wide variety of ways to play a rogue. I mean, you could. I mean, you could just simply be a beggar on the streets, and you can you can make use of the role class. Fighter, kind of the same thing too. You could just be a homeless guy out in the streets. You know, you could be some guy could hire you to to be a leg breaker. You know, that kind of thing, and you'd still count as a fighter. So yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to get at with all these how easy these classes would be to role play. You, you couldn't really play a homeless. He couldn't be a homeless ranger, you know, panhandling out in the streets. No, he's he's based out in the woods. You know, paladin, same thing. Sorcerer, you couldn't really do it. I mean, they're... Um, no. Yeah, there's wizard. Wizard, you're... I couldn't... I couldn't really see a wizard being being homeless or you you couldn't you couldn't really do it like he'd he'd have to be like middle upper class or something uh warlock and sorcerer kind of struck me as the same thing i don't even know what a a warlock's a new class um sorcerer i think started in third edition but for the first two editions it was just straight up wizard um yeah you guys can see it So, but yeah, if I was, um, if somebody was wanting to get into D&D &D and wanted to, wanted my advice, um, a good one to start with would either be a human fighter or a human rogue. Because, like I said, you could, you could practically be, um, street-level homeless people with these and you could still pull it off. So there's more options with these. But I'm gonna. In fact, let me um. Since I've never seen Warlock before in this, I'm gonna go ahead and warp down to him. So secrets of knowledge lesson. Minor but last month. Some facility. To Okay, so warlocks are a little more, little more, little more uh, melee combat oriented then. I want to say they're um. Uh, I want to say they're more, more summoner heavy. But yeah, this almost looks like um. This almost looks like the warlock in a uh, World of Warcraft. I know uh, one of the one of the specializations on warlock is uh, demonology, where um eventually you can you can transform into a big full blown demon. Still wondering what the uh, with advantage mechanic is. I've never seen that before. Oh, 
lowly patron. Yeah, th this is this is the warlock on uh, World of Warcraft. The great old one. I wonder if this is uh this is uh Lovecraftian right here. You know, like tentacles and stuff. Okay, so... Okay, so, kind of abrupt, but I'm gonna go ahead and call it good here. Um, I just wanted to see this class here, because I have just to get an idea of what it's like. Um, so, yeah, I gotta... I'm gonna go ahead and shut it on here. I'm gonna get this video all uploaded and processed and all that good stuff, and I'm gonna have... Hopefully, I can get it all done here in about a half an hour, because I gotta lay down and get some sleep for the, um, for my afternoon slash evening stream so yeah but otherwise hey thanks for uh thanks for uh thanks for tuning in and uh listen to me everybody i appreciate that and um but like i like i said i don't have that much of an interest in actually playing the game i just wanted to check this out so yeah but but otherwise once again thanks for dropping by and uh i'll see you all next time bye for now